Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create a timer or a stopwatch for your game inside of Unreal Engine 5. And now in this example I'm going to be doing it so the timer counts down, however I will also show you how you can do the opposite so it will be a stopwatch that counts up or a timer that counts up as well. So let me just hit play and quickly show you what it is that we're going to make today. So you can see at the top of the screen it's starting at 2 minutes and it's just counting down and what we'll do as well is also make it so once the timer does reach zero something will happen as well so for example if you want the player to die or you want something to spawn in and you just want the game to end or the game to start i will show you how to do all of that when the timer reaches zero so again there's not really much to show here it's a very simple basic thing it's just a timer you know what it is but this is what we'll be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our widget which will host the timer on it. So what we'll do is we'll right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. We're going to create a user widget and I'm just going to name this one W underscore timer. And we'll open it up straight away. In here we're going to add in a canvas panel and then in the canvas panel we're going to search for and add a horizontal box like so. We'll make sure this horizontal box anchors to the whole top of the screen. Set the offset right to zero so it fills up the entire top and we'll set the size Y to let's say 50, make it a little bit bigger. I'm also going to set the alignment to let's say minus one just so it moves it down a little bit so it's not at the very top of the screen. What we're doing here is we're just setting up where the text will be. So now we can add the text into that horizontal box and then if we set it to fill instead of auto and set the horizontal and vertical alignments to be the center, you'll see it's now centered on this part of the screen perfectly where we want it. Here you can modify the font, the size, the color, anything you want, but I'm just going to leave it at default. And if in here we write for example 10 and then a colon and 00, zero you see that's what it is going to look like. So if it has 10 minutes, that's what it would look like, like so. Next, we're going to set up formatting the text to be in here because we obviously can't write it in, we need it to actually be a variable. So we're going to go to bind on the text here. We've got content, we'll go to bind, create binding. Then we'll drag out a return value and we'll get a format text. In this format here, we're going to get the squiggly open bracket and write mm or minutes and then squiggly close. Then we'll get a colon and then squiggly open, ss or seconds, squiggly close. And then when you press enter, you can see we can now have MN and SS here. So what this will do is it, it will input a variable into MM and then it will do the colon since that's not in the brackets and then it will input the variable of SS. So we're going to be inputting minutes and seconds into here. So let's create those variables. So let's create a new variable, name this minutes and we'll set this to be a float and then we'll get another variable, name this seconds and that one needs to be a float as well. If we compile this, we can drag these in and then we don't want to just connect it straight in like that. What we want to do first is drag out of one of these and then get a two text. So two text float like so. And if we open this up, what we want to do is change the minimum integral digits to two. So what this is going to do is it means if you have two minutes, it's not going to be two, it's going to be zero two. Or if you have five seconds, it's not going to be five it's going to be zero 05. So obviously that's how time works. So if you see in the bottom right of my screen down here, I have the time. You can see it's 0916, not just 916. So just going to look a lot better. And then what we'll do here is drag our time value into mm. We can copy and paste this to text, selecting that into SS and putting the seconds in here as well. So we're just formatting how we want the text to look like so. We can compile and save that. Now we've got it all formatted to look how we want, we need to actually create the timer to set these variables. So let's go over to the event graph and we'll delete event pre-construct and event tick. We'll just use event construct here as I want this to fire off as soon as the game starts or as soon as this widget is put on screen, I should say. But if you don't want this to, be, to happen as soon as you put the widget on screen, just put this on a custom event and call it whenever you do want to start it. But off of event construct, what we're gonna do is set timer by event we'll drag out of event and add custom event and i'll name this decrease 
timer, like so, or decrease seconds, or whatever it is you want. Then in the set timer by event, in the time, we're going to do one. So every one second, this decrease timer custom event is going to fire off. By default, this will happen once, so we'll take looping. So now again, every single one second, this event will fire off. And what this event is going to do is again, just do our timer. So what we want is we want to drag in seconds here and get it. Out of this, we're going to get an equal equal, and we'll leave that as zero. We'll then get a branch connecting that into the event, and this being the condition. So if seconds is equal to zero, we don't want to decrease the seconds, we want to decrease the minutes, and then reset the seconds back up to 60 again, or 59. So if seconds is equal to zero, so true of this branch, we're going to set our seconds to 59. So they're resetting, they're going all the way back around again. And then we also want to decrease our minutes by one. So we'll get our minutes and get a decrement float like so. And we'll decrease that by one, which is what the decrement is doing. However, if seconds isn't equal to zero, so false of this branch, then we just want to decrease the seconds. So we'll get our seconds float here and then get a decrement float. Same as we did for the minutes, but just for the float instead. So let me move this down a little bit. Let's just organize this so it looks a little bit nicer, like so. And that is technically all you need to do, really, to have the timer going down. However, what do we want to happen when the timer reaches zero? Well, out of this decrement of the minutes here, so off of true of the branch, we're going to drag out this and get an equal equal, and we'll set this to minus one. Because the minutes will go down every time the seconds reach zero. If the minutes is equal to zero, then we're counting down 59, 58, 57, etc. But once again, the seconds get to zero again, the minutes will be set to minus one. That is when we know the timer is done. So if the minutes is equal to minus one, so we'll get the branch in here again, like so. True means that the timer has finished. False means it hasn't finished. So false, we're not going to do anything because if the timer is not finished, we're just going to continue going down. But if it has finished, what we want to do is come back to the set timer by event drag out of the return value and clear and invalidate timer by handle. Disconnect the execution and move it into true like so. And what this is going to do is it's just going to stop firing off this event because obviously this is happening every second. It's looping. We want to stop it because we're stopping the timer because it's reached zero. Then what we're also going to do is just reset minutes and seconds to zero like so. So the timer has finished and it's also going to look like it's finished as well. It's not going to be minus one and zero, it will be zero and zero, like so. And then anything after this is what happens when the timer finishes. So this is now finished. Anything after this is the code you want to fire off when the timer finishes. So this could be spawning in an AI. This could be opening a door. This could be finishing the game. This could be killing the player. This could be loading up a new map. So you were in a lobby, the game was starting, this loads a new map. It could be teleporting to the player. Whatever it is that you want to do, you just fire off that code after here. So obviously I don't have anything that I want to do right now. So I'm probably just going to put a print string saying timer ended. But anything you want, just put here. We'll compile and save that. And now how do we set what we want the time to actually be starting at? Well, we can just set these variables here. So if I set this at one minute and three seconds, we'll see the timer working perfectly. So it will start at one minute, three seconds. We'll then be able to see the seconds decreasing and we'll also see the minutes decreasing when the seconds reach zero. But we also need to put this on the screen so it does actually start and the player can see it. So to do that, we can minimize this and we go to our player blueprint. You can also do this in the level blueprint as well if you want, but I'm going to do it in the player. So I'll go to third person, blueprints, BP third person character. Then I'm going to go to event begin play, which I have here. I'm then going to create widget. I'm then in here going to do my W underscore timer and simply add to viewport. Because again, as soon as this is added to the screen, it is constructed, the timer is going to start. So now if we hit play, what we can do is you can see it's one minute, three seconds. The seconds are going down. And when it reaches zero, the minutes then also go down with it as well. What I'll do now is I'll set the timer to be starting at zero minutes and 10 seconds. So we can then see what happens when it reaches zero as well. So we can show you that that is also working. 
So it's 10 seconds. It's counting all the way down from 10 perfectly, as you just saw there as well. It works with the minutes too. Once this reaches zero, all that's going to happen for me is it will stop and there'll be a print string in the top left saying timer ended like so. And you can see the timer is now not doing anything. It's just saying at zero. You could as well also, for example, if you want, have it so it's flashing. What you do is just create an animation in here and play that here. Again, anything you want to happen, just do after this bit of code here. And that is all you need to do to set up a timer. If you want it to be a stopwatch going the other way, you'd basically just invert all of this. So instead of doing minus, you do a plus. And if this was zero, and you wouldn't set this to zero, you set it to 59. So I'll just do a very quick example here. So I'm not gonna change the name from decrease timer, but obviously you would want to. So actually what I'll probably do is copy and paste this. So I'll duplicate it so I can keep that one as well. And then I'll just name this one increase timer. And then we'll keep it as seconds, but it will be 59 instead of zero. So once this reaches 59, we want to increase the minute. So we'll then set seconds to zero. And instead of decreasing the minutes here, we'll get an increment float. So we'll increase it like so. And that will go into there. And then if, but if seconds isn't equal to 59, we don't want to decrease them. Again, we just want to increase them. So we get an increment float here once again, like so. And then this here is where you do if it is if the time is ended, if you want it to end. So this, if it's going up, you might just have it be going up forever. Uh, but if you want it to end at a certain point, you can do that as well. So you could just set this to 10 minutes, for example. So if we compile this, uh, sorry, I also need to clear and validate this timer here. There you go. And then what we'll do is I'll just have this event going into here like so. Let me just delete this for a second too. And now if we hit play, we should see that it will start at 10 seconds and it's going to be counting up like so. If I were to start it at 59 seconds, or let's start it at 9 minutes and 56 seconds, for example, so we can also see it reach 10 minutes and end here. We can then see the minutes working and it also ends. So it's at 9.56, it's counting up, it will then get to 10 minutes and the time is ended, although, sorry, that went to zero because I didn't change this here. So you want to have that be 10 and zero or whatever it is that you're ending on here. So we also actually set this to eight minutes so we can see it go up from nine, from eight to nine as well, just to show you are working again, just good to test it. 8.59, it goes up to nine. And then let's set this all the way back up to nine minutes again, so we can see that it is definitely working to end the code as well. We can then play this 9.56, counting all the way up and it'll get to 10 minutes and the top left it says timer ended perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've created a timer or a stopwatch system in which we can decrease the timer or increase it depending on what you want and you can set it up to end at whatever time you want as well and do whatever you want after it has ended. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel a lot. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.